Hi there, it's Neil from DiagonalMove.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Rifles in the Ardennes, which is an abstracted World War II solitaire game. Um, it's a game in which you can play one of the Americans, the Germans or the Russians and recreate the, war in, the Second World War in Europe um, on this quite abstracted um, level. There's a narrative element to it in that you, you build a squad and you can take that squad through the mission and then carry them on through into uh, the next mission as part of the campaign. And rather than just playing one mission for you, I'm going to attempt the campaign. Uh, there is a way to string together all the different missions that you can play. Uh, you, so for example, you may play the first mission, Make note of what happens, upgrade your, your soldiers, replace any soldiers that are no longer with you, and then move on to the next mission. There's eight missions in total. Um, we'll, I'm not sure we'll play them all, but we'll certainly see how we go with the first few and demonstrate this really quite cool game uh, in its campaign form rather than just a one-off one -off mission. Okay, so for this first one, I'll give an, uh, a demonstration of how the game is set up and um, what some of the terms mean. I probably won't do that for the next few videos, just to make the videos a little bit shorter. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so the, the the game starts with your forces at the bottom here. And they are not technically on the map until you move onto one of these six stripes. And you usually start at the bottom, work your way to the top. Um, before you can do anything with your soldiers though, you need to create your squad. Now, the way that you do that, and I'll just use the USSR army for demonstration, is each soldier, uh, there's different types of soldier, each one has a certain cost, and then you have a certain number of points that you can spend to build up your army um, or your squad that you're going to take through through the mission you choose to play. Um, you can have things like grenades and so on, and then there's some information down here regarding who you're fighting and, and what, what the strength of the soldiers you're going to fight are. Um, the combat is determined using the, the base factors, any, any range, um, and then you do have things like your um, uh, toughness number, I think it is, something like that, but that's the strength essentially, and then an attribute of the, of the character who might be a leader and they're quite important or it might be an area effect weapon or ignore cover or so on and so forth. So you can build your squad based on these points. But for today I've just chosen the uh, one of the pre-selected squads just for simplicity really and that squad is going to be and I've given them names because you can. We've got Adam who is our leader we have Ben who's a rifleman John who carries a light machine gun Charles, who is our assistant leader, who will take over from Adam if anything goes wrong. Uh, we have Dan, who is a submachine gun guy. Uh, Edward, who is a rifleman. And Greg, who is also a rifleman. Now, a few terms in the game. We have a unit, which is a single, single character. You can have a group, which, which is all four together, or even if, if you choose all, all of them together. Uh, or you can split them into groups and then when you spend what's known as your action points to to activate your units you can activate all of the units in a squad and of course if that squad is just one or that group is just one then you only activate the one so you can activate multiple units for each of the action points that you spend how do you get action points well you roll some dice uh, and the that's the order and what you'll do is you'll roll three dice. If you roll a one or a two, they are ignored. And the, rem the remaining numbers above, three and above, are the numbers that you have for action points. So this would be one action point. If I roll this, I would have one that I ignore, one action point, and then a second action point plus what is known as a bonus action point. And to represent the difference in these, I'm going to use grey cubes and blue cubes. Bonus points can be spent as action points, but they can also be spent as other things as well. In addition, I'm going to be using these orange cubes to represent what's known as recon points, you can, which can do things like uh, allow rerolls and so on, and you get those partly through spending bonus points. Okay, 
Um, this is a print and play game, so that's why I have a, a selection of cubes rather than um, anything a bit more more fancy, although I'm not sure if anything like that comes with the game. Um, so it is, it's actually published by Tiny Battle, probably should have said that at the beginning. Um, okay, so the mission we're going to do today is called Mission 1, it's Patrol, and our aim is to gather info about enemy forces and we have to reach strike one so our squad has to get to from here to here get our guys all up here or as many of them as we can and then the game is over we need to set up first and the first thing we need to do is pick event markers one through eight and place one at random on each strike so these markers here are the events they've all got a number on the back and you shuffle them up and then place them um, at random on the stripes and then each mission has a table that tells you what that event is on each each mission. When you move your guys onto a just for demonstration, move your guys onto a stripe you reveal it and the, the mission uh, event table will tell you what has happened by moving onto that stripe. So the first thing you do is you shuffle them up and just place them Onto, onto the stripes at random. Then what you'll do is you'll do something similar for terrain. Uh, and terrain you roll uh, on, a, on a table. Let's put those there. The other two are just placed to one side. And you have to roll on a table. Now, there are different tables again for each mission and you will Roll the die on each stripe and see what terrain is. So for terrain number stripe number one, we have a one. Sorry, number six, which is open. Number five, we have a six, which is a building. Okay, now the way terrain works um, in this game is you have uh, find the building first. It's probably a good example. And you have a whole bunch of different things as you can see. Um, What's the best? The building is in the other pile. Oh, here we go, building. Okay, so this is what's known as a terrain feature. They are they have a stripe, uh, so not a stripe, a spot on them, and you have to have your your squad on on the the square on in the building to benefit from any cover bonus, which is different to uh, terrain effects that affect the entire stripe. So, like, for example, the hill where if you're on the stripe, you gain a cover bonus or a die roll bonus regardless. Um, so carrying on then with stripe number four. We have a number five on number four, which is a tree. That's another terrain feature, if I remember correctly. There we go, a tree. Number three. Three for number three, which is another tree. Might be in this part. There we go. Number two. And each mission that we do, you'll have a different type of terrain, uh, a different table. So these number will, numbers will equate to different things and different missions. So number one on number two is open terrain, which can be a good or a bad thing. And number three on number one, which is the woods. Okay, and the woods are that example of terrain that affects the entire stripe rather than just the soldiers on the feature. Um, all will become more clear as we play. Okay, that is our mission set up. And so the, the way the game works, you have what's first, what's known as a group creation phase, where you can decide... The, the, the grouping of your soldiers, if they're on the same stripe, you can of course keep them the same or you can change them around if they're on the same stripe. And for this phase I'm going to keep them as they were originally, a group of three and a group of four. Um, the next phase is to roll for um, friendly activation. Once you've done your activation and you've spent all your, point, your movement, your action points, you then move on to the enemy presence check where you will check to see how many enemies you have in front of you and then you will activate those enemies using again a number of tables on the on the mission chart 
once you've done that, the turn, turn moves and you start again. Uh, okay, so let's begin. Um, we have 10 turns in which to complete this mission and I'll just place my white dice on number 11 so that I know if I hit that white dice, the game is over. Right, so number one, turn number one. I'm going to keep my units as I said. Uh, I'm going to roll my three dice, which you may or may not be able to see up in the corner there. And I have two sixes and a five, which is fantastic because I gain three action points and two bonus action points, which is wonderful, wonderful news for us. Okay, now our actions, we have a whole bunch of actions and some are more relevant than others, depending on your mission. Um, for example, spotting hidden units is only really used or only really helpful when you need when, when the, the enemy units are actually starting the game hidden. Now we don't have any hidden units, so at the moment at least this is not something we can use. But the other things you can do are the usual things of move, move onto a terrain feature, take cover, uh, employ flanking fire, rally, overwatch and so on. But we'll go through all those as we come to them. But the first thing we'll do is we'll spend an action point, which are these grey cubes, remember, spend that and we'll move our smaller squad to the first stripe and that is event number two and we've got away with event number two nothing happens at this moment so that's pretty good and I'll take advantage of that to spend another action point to move my second squad onto the board okay my third action point and my two bonus points not sure, let's move again, and this time I will spend a second action point, sorry, my bonus point, bonus action point, in order to gain a recon point should I need to have a re-roll at some point. So, now keep that in this box here. Actually, no, I'll keep it down the bottom so that I don't forget about it. Okay, so we have one bonus action point remaining, but we are moving now. We're going to move the smaller squad, sorry, the larger squad, onto stripe five. And we have event number five. And event number five is an enemy, a light machine gun on a building on the previous stripe. Okay, so the first thing you do is find a light machine gun enemy unit. That's not the best to have straight away. Um, there we go, light machine gun. He's in a building, so we need to place a building. There's no building already, so we place him on the building. Now, you do not have cumulative modifiers in terms of cover and stuff here, which, um, just to make that, that clear from the beginning, you, you have the, the, the best one that's applicable to you. So this guy's in cover in a building with a modifier of two. Which leaves us with an interesting choice. We can either try to shoot at him, um, although that may not be the best thing to do because um, because we have we would have to roll higher than his toughness number plus the cover and a light machine gun's toughness number is six um our base combat factor and again using the russians to demonstrate this is this would be the number we would have to achieve to do a damage this is our starting weapon so our rifles are a range one starting one so basically we'd have to roll a six um in order to, to do anything but because it's in cover of two and the German machine gunner starts with a toughness of six. We can't actually damage him at the moment, so we're going to have to actually get on the stripe so we can use our range zero submachine gun, um, which I'm not overly keen on doing because if we do move on to the stripe here, we will then have to reveal that event as well. So my bonus action point, I'll spend it to, as a normal action point to move that squad. Now... Yeah, let's do that. Now, the um, bonus action points and action points have to be spent each turn or they're lost. Recon points carry over. Okay, so now we have the enemy presence check, which is the next phase. Now, the enemy presence, again, you roll on the table, and on a one to five, nothing happens. On a six, you have to then roll on what's known as the patrol table, which we'll show you in a moment. Now, if you have one 
or no uh, enemy units on the board, you, you do this this enemy presence check. Now I'll just confirm it's not two. Um, enemy presence check. Yeah, so if you have one or zero enemy units on the map, you have to roll on the enemy presence check table. And we have a three. So, and a three in the in mission one means we do not have any further enemy. So we move on to the enemy activation. So that basically, that, that guy here, the German machine gunner, is going to do something now. Um, in order to determine what he does, because there's this four or five different actions that they can do. You roll on the table, and this instance we've rolled a three. So it says, if the target group's in range, attack, otherwise cover. Now, machine gunners have a range, or German machine gunners have a range of two. So that means two stripes. Um, and so we're well in range. So what we need to do then is determine what the machine gunner is going to attack, which group is going to attack number two, group number two, um, and a roll of two will be the smaller group, so you'll attack these guys. And then an individual target, although he is an area effect, so you'll actually shoot two. We have a one, which is the lower toughness number, and a six, which is a higher combat factor. Now our guys, the combat factor is going to shoot the leader, so that's one of his attacks. The leader's got a submachine gun which has a combat base combat factor of three. And then he's probably going the, the toughness numbers are the same, so I would suggest he'd probably try and shoot the light machine gunner. Okay, so starting off with the submachine gunner, our leader, he's rolled a six. He has a base combat factor of two. Our leader has a toughness number of six, which means he's injured. And we get a suppressed marker on our leader, which is really going to limit some of the things we can do. Um, then attacking the light machine gunner, or as or John, as I've called him, he rolls a one, one plus the three. Sorry, one plus the um, combat factor of two is only a three, and therefore he doesn't generate any injuries on our machine gunner, but we do have a suppressed suppressed leader now. Okay, um, so moving on a turn to turn two, we drop the dice, but we will start, um, have a spare, we will start the next turn, turn two. Um, now, just a quick check on suppressed units. It does limit what you can do with them. And as he is our leader, that's quite a significant issue. So let's just have a quick check to remind myself exactly what happens with suppressed units. Okay, so basically you have a minus one die roll modifier to every roll with the exception of a recovery. Okay, second suppressed result is death for our unit. So anyway, let's roll. I'm going to keep the groups the same. That's the group activation phase. And then let's roll. And we have three actions plus a bonus action. Again, that's pretty cool. Um, and we still have that recon point to spend as well. Now, all we have to do, remember, is get to here. So in theory, you could just run up the top. Now you need to be a little bit careful of that because um, if you're injured you, can, you, you do stand at risk of dying before you get there. Um, and as I said this is the first time I've actually strung the missions together so I'm not 100% sure at this point whether losing a guy early is a good thing or not. But we'll see. Um, I imagine it's not to be honest but let's have a go. Um, right, so anyway, actions phase, unit activation. Um, let's let's try and recover our leader, because leaders are important. They have a benefit to our area effect weapons particularly, and our fire groups. Or a four, which is above a three, so he is no longer suppressed. That's excellent. But we have spent an action. Next action, then, is going to be to move... Uh, revealing event number six, 
and event number six in this mission is civilians. We can look at the previous strike without activating it. Okay, uh, that's numerically previous rather than physically previous, which is something that took me a little while to remember. So, number eight. So that activation, that event has been activated. Number eight is a rifle on the tree, on a tree in here. So we've not activated it yet, but when we do, we'll have to place a rifle, an enemy rifle there in a tree. Okay, that's useful to know as we um, are already facing facing potential damage from this guy in the building. Okay, let's use our... This guy, in, this guy in the building is, is, is problematic. Um, definitely problematic. Okay. Um, right. Let me. I'll tell you what. Let's let's use him with his grenade. Every every guy uh, you can buy extra equipment. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier. But every um, Soldier costs a number of action points, and you can buy grenades for an action point as well. And in this mission, um, we have six grenades split between our, our seven soldiers. Um, once you spend them, they're gone. But they have a, a, an interesting effect, and you, you can use them as an area weapon if you're faced with lots of soldiers. And the other thing you can do is plus one, I believe it is, just double checking, to the combat factor of your weapon. Uh, only using at range zero. Yeah, so you can add the, the grenade combat factor to your combat factor. So we're going to attack. Um, we're going to attack with our submachine gunner who has a base combat of three. And we'll use his grenade, so we'll cross off his grenade. Um, and so his base combat factor is now five, and we have to get um, above six plus so above eight in order to kill that guy. So let's roll the die, see how, where we go on. Not, not kill him, but damage him. We roll a five, plus a five. The like the machine gunner is suppressed. Um, we can now attack with the others. I'm just wondering whether it's worth doing that. Whether I should have perhaps concentrated fire or something. Um, okay, so our light machine gunner has a base combat factor of one. Ah, okay. Um, probably not worth doing it then, is it? Um, we moved and fired. So okay, so we got an action plus a bonus action to go. I think we will. Yeah, let's, let's, let's spend our action, a, a second action point to move here, and then we will, we will, we'll repeat the attack using the submachine gunner in the second squad to try and kill that, um, that machine gunner. So we're going to use the grenade again, the grenade that Dan has this time, rather than the grenade that uh, Adam had. Um, I don't know what their rankings are, probably private or something. Um, Okay, uh, Okay. so we need to, we've got a submachine gunner plus two, which is five, so we need to roll higher than eight, and we've got four, machine gunner's dead. Okay, that is good. Um, moving on to the enemy presence check, we do need to check for enemy, because there aren't any on the board at the moment, we've got a five. And on the presence table for this mission, a five is a nil result, so we're good to go. We can skip the next enemy uh, activation phase and move on to turn number three. I'm going to keep the groups the same as before and roll the die to see what the activations are. Oh, 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 we have three ones, which is awful. Now, we can discard ones and twos, so we have no activations this time. Our patrol are uh, a bit stuck currently. Um, so which means we move straight on into the enemy presence, which again is nothing. So essentially this turn, turn three, has just been spent having lunch, I think. Um, 
Hmm, interesting. So turn number four then. Let's move on to turn number four. I must admit, it's not often that that happens. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the resolution is. I don't recall seeing it in the rules, but um, yeah, it does appear you miss a turn there. Um, but anyway, turn number four. We discard one action point. We have a bonus action point and a, uh, a regular action point. To clarify, and I appreciate I may have done this slightly awry earlier, when you roll a six, you don't get an action point plus a bonus, you just get the bonus. So I may have done that slightly wrong earlier, but I'm no harm done, frankly. Um, it's just a demonstration. Okay, um, so that that's, means we do have two actions, and I'm just going to move both my squads now with those um, those two points, revealing, as we did, the enemy rifleman on the tree, I think it was. Any more enemy rifleman on a tree, yeah. Okay. Um, that event's done. We then move on to the enemy presence check, so basically a six, and we have another enemy. We only have a one. So now the German rifleman acts. And what's he going to do? He's going to roll a five. And so he's going to, if there's a target group at range one, we advance and then attack, otherwise cover and then attack. Well, we're going to advance and then attack. Now, there are a number of priorities when you, when you operate the AI, and so it's worth having a read just to make sure you're doing the correct things. Um, but in this instance, we're going to advance and then attack. Um, so we're going to move one stripe towards the nearest friendly group. And if there's an empty terrain feature, we will move on it. Um, if there is no terrain feature, we'll cover, but there is. So we'll move from one tree to another tree, and then we will fire. So as before, we need to decide which group the rifle is going to shoot at. Going to shoot at the smaller group. We rolled a one, so that's the smaller group, so that's these guys. And we are going to shoot the unit with the lower TN. Well, we don't have, they all have the same TN number, which is the toughness number, so um, I will say we're going to shoot at our leader again. And so he, the rifleman has a base combat factor of one, and so he needs to roll a six to, uh, a five to damage me. Uh, it was a six, so my leader is suppressed again, which is somewhat unfortunate. Um, no further actions, move on to turn five. Keep my groups the same. And this time we are going to have two actions, plus that bonus action point. Okay, there we go. I can't quite remember exactly what I did last time, but um, if I've done it wrong, we have certainly done it right this time. Um, now, we have three actions. We could get most of the way to the end, and in fact, I think that is what I will do. I'll try and get my guys to the end. So let's move that group to start with, revealing number seven. So event number seven is Heavy Rain, a minus one DRM to combat except when attacking at range zero. Okay, so that's a weather effect. Um, okay, so that's gonna affect everybody. That's not too bad, that's not too bad at all. So let's move our leader up as well. Um, and then finally, we will, we will move the leaders again into stripe eight, so we're nearly at the end. Event number three has been rolled though, and event number three is we rolled on the patrol table. Now, the patrol table is actually on here. Um, and so basically we have uh, a one in six chance of there being a rifleman. There's a 50% chance of there being two riflemen. And then a one in six chance of there being rifles and machine gunners or a rifleman with a grenade and a machine gun. Well, that's not so good, is it? So number five, we have a rifleman and a submachine gunner on the previous stripe. Uh, right, okay. Submachine gunner and a rifleman. 
on the previous stripe. Now these come on in groups. Okay, now we'll do the enemy presence check, but we have two enemies, so we don't need to don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we'll do the activation. So each group activates, and I tend to just activate them in terms of closest. So this group first. One, which is going to be the smaller group. Um, okay, so we're going to attack this group here, but only one of them is in range, so we will attack with our riflemen. It's going to have that minus one DRM. So he's well, and we have a five, so he's going to attack the higher combat factor, which is the machine gunner, and then he's going to roll a four plus his one. Does he have a grenade? No, he didn't have a grenade, but he's not done any damage because he's not rolled six or more, including his the, the die roll modifier. Uh, the submachine gunner then. Um, remove. It's going to try and spot us, which is not relevant. And then we advance, then attack. Okay, so he's going to move back to the other tree, the one he originally started on, and we are going to then attack and we will attack oh, well, four, the unit with the lower toughness number they're all the same um, so I reckon we'll just have him shoot at the submachine gunner again he rolls a 2 plus the 1 minus the 1 DRM for the rain and um, no damage ok so turn number 6 And we should finish the mission this turn. We have two fives and a six, so that is two actions and a bonus action. And I'll just move the guy there. The guy's there. And that is the end of mission one. That we as a success. Um, we have successfully reached our patrol objective. Um, and yeah, that's fantastic. We have no casualties. We just have a slightly slightly damaged leader and so what we need to do now is have a look at the campaign instructions end of mission briefing okay any wounded soldiers recover which would have been um from which, which is why we skipped this phase we haven't got any wounded soldiers at this point um we find out whether they're wounded or not now which is why the squad selection phase is um skipped uh, that was probably gibberish, I appreciate, but um, basically, first mission, we start at the end of mission briefing. Um, the, um, any wounded soldier, no, we didn't do that. Roll 1d6 for each eliminated unit. We don't have any eliminated units. That's fine. Um, if you did have any, that's when you determine whether they are permanently dead, wounded, or only slightly wounded. And then we generate some experience. Okay, then experience can be spent on this table when you have enough. Okay, you roll 1d6, add the result to your squad's experience points, keeping track of any unused ones. If we lost or aborted the mission, lose an XP. Regardless, after each mission, your squad gains 1 XP, at least 1 XP. The XP can be used to improve the team, so 2 XP promotes a soldier, 2 XP gains a skill. Um, okay, so basically roll the die. We've got four, so we've got four experience points. Okay, so we can promote somebody or we can take some skills. Hmm. Okay, that's um I'm promoting to veteran will allow you to have a plus one to any die roll. Oh that's quite useful. Let's do that. We'll spend both the XPs, uh, both all four XPs, and we'll promote two of our soldiers to veterans. Um, and the soldiers that we will promote will be our leader Adam and our assistant leader Charles. Okay, and then we will move on to mission two, which will be the next video. Hope that's been uh, useful. Um, our next mission is going to be a rescue. Um, and I'll see you for that mission.